equals 0. Now, there's two steps. What I'm going to do is first kind of explain what we talked about last class period. And then I'm going to um, expand on that on what I'm asking you to do tonight. Okay? So the first thing I, all I asked you guys to do was to put this in factored form. So there's two factored forms that we talked about. Um, a difference of two cubes or a, or a sum of two cubes. Well, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, you see a subtraction. So this would be an example of the difference of two cubes. So the factored form of a cube term minus another cube term was a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. That was in your note. That was provided to you. So all we're simply going to do is now identify well, if do we, is this in that format? Do we have something minus another something? Yes? OK, so basically what we want to do is write this out in the factored form. But the problem is we know that x cubed, we can say that's a cubed number. But is 4 a cubed number? No. Is 32 a cubed number? No. And if you don't remember, I even kept the cubed numbers up here written for you so you know if it's a cubed number or not. So therefore, we kind of have an issue because those aren't cubed numbers. But there is something that we've been talking about ever since we started factoring, and that's always factoring out the GCF. Now, if I factor out a common uh, factor of 4, you can see that I just have a cubed number minus another cubed number, because 8 is a cubed number. right? 8 is a cubed number. What do you mean? That A cubed number is a number you can multiply by itself three times. That gives you 8, if you could let whoever that is. So therefore, 2 times 2 times 2 would give you 8, right? So basically, what we wanted to do. Hello. Who? Oh. Shoot. So basically, what we want to do then, if we can say that a cubed is x cubed, and we could say b cubed is equal to 8. Does everybody agree with me? Does anybody see why I'm using 8 and not negative 8? Anybody see? Everybody agree? It's just a cubed minus b cubed. So we just want to see what is a and then what is b. So we're saying a cubed is the same thing as this term, and b cubed is the same thing as that term. But the formula talks about a and b, right? So therefore, the best thing to do is figure out what is a and figure out what is b. Well, if a cubed is equal to x cubed, and I want to figure out a, how do I go from a cubed to a? I'm going to take the cube root. The cube root of a cubed is just a. So if I take the cube root of both sides, the cube root of x cubed is x. right? The cube root is saying, what number multiplied by itself three times gives you x cubed? Well, x times x times x gives you x cubed. right? Then we do the same thing over here. I want to know what b is. So to find b, I'm going to take the cube root of b cubed. Well, what number multiplied or what variable multiplied by itself three times gives you b cubed? b. Take the cube root of both sides. What number multiplied by itself three times gives you a um, positive 8? 2. Does everybody see then? that a is x and b is 2. Yes? So now all I'm simply going to do is plug in my a and b into the factored formula. And that's it. That's really all I had to do. So therefore, I have 4 times a, which is x. And I'm going to put them in parentheses as I um, enter them in. x minus 2 times x squared plus x times 2 plus 2 squared. Does everybody see how I enter those in? I put parentheses around them. Questions? No? So now I can just go ahead and simplify. x minus 2 is just x minus 2. x squared is x squared. x times 2 is the same thing as a positive 2x. And then 2 squared is going to be 4. And that was equal to 0. Right? OK. That's all I asked you guys to do for your homework last night was that. That's it. So for 1, 3, 5, and 7, that's all I asked you to do. Just factor it. Now let's go to what I'm going to ask you guys to do tonight. The question is not actually factoring it. I did that because I only had time for you guys to go through half the problem or to show half the problem. Now what I want you guys to do is to solve. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you can see right now we have a product of factors that's equal to 0, correct? So if we have a product of factors equal to 0, we can now apply the 0 product property. Now, I factor out this 4. The 4, again, does not affect the zeros. So I can just simply divide that out. Okay, So therefore, I can set each of my factors equal to 0 and apply the 0 product property. Now, this one is fairly easy to find the zeros, right? We just add 2 to both sides. x equals 2. Good. Got that one done, right? That wasn't so bad. However, here, 
Well, now we have a quadratic. We still need, we want to see if we can still factor this down, correct? We can't just solve for x here. We need to find all of these solutions. So, and the problem with this is we want to see, all right, well, let's try to see if we can factor it. What two numbers multiply to give you 4 but add to give you 2? Two? 2 and what? Two numbers that multiply to give you 4, add to give you 2. Well, there's only two numbers that add to give you 2, right? 1 and 1 and 2 and 0. Do those numbers multiply to give you 4? No, so therefore this is not factorable, right? So if it's not factorable, then we have to rely on two different techniques that we learned last chapter. That is either completing the square or quadratic formula. Me personally would always like to do these problems using quadratic formula. So if you forgot the quadratic formula, you're going to want to make sure you have that in your back pocket, even though that was provided for you on that quiz. Um, quadratic formula, first of all, do we know what A, B, and C, right? So therefore, the quadratic formula is opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So now we just plug in our values for a, b, and c. a is 1, b is 2, c is 4. So I have x equals opposite of b, which is negative 2, plus or minus b squared. So that's 2 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Does everybody see me? See what I did? So we already have this 1, 0. We're trying to find all the zeros. Because the other thing, too, ladies and gentlemen, is think about it. What is the power of this polynomial? 3. How many solutions do we have to have? Three. How many do we currently have? One. 1, right? So we know there's other two other solutions. So therefore, that's why we have to solve for this. So therefore, when I simplify, I get negative 2 plus or minus 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 times uh, positive 4 is going to be negative 16 all over 2. Simplify that over here. x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 over 2. Right? 4 minus 16 is negative 12. Now, we've talked about simplifying negative radicals. Remember, bless you, remember we can break this up into 4 times 3 times negative 1. Does everybody agree with me that square root of negative 12 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 3 times negative 1? Yes? So now I can break this up into 2. We can't take the square root of 3, so we leave that there. And then the square root of negative 1 is i. I. So I have x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2i times the square root of 3 all over 2. However, can my 2 divide into both of those terms? Can my 2 divide into negative 2 and 2 divide into 2i? Yes. So my final answer, if I have some work here, I do, is x equals negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 3. How many of those solutions do I have there? If I have the plus or minus, I have what? Two, two of them. And they are both are what type of solutions? Complex. complex solutions. So let's think about it. I have two complex solutions plus one real solution. That gives me a total of three solutions. However, how many x-intercepts do I have for this graph? Real x-intercepts? Just one, right? Does everybody see that? See how that kind of works? Yep. OK, so that's what you guys are going to do for your homework tonight is to